The next thing we'll see is the correlation. Correlation uh, is is actually uh, a relationship between variables, and we compute that for numerical variables, not for categorical variables. So that's something we only can do for numerical variables. Now there are two ways in can we can do. We simply take two variables at a time and then take correlation of them and then keep on doing that or we simply sub take the um, uh, subset of the num all numerical variables and com compute the correlated matrix. We'll do the second thing. That's easier, right? We do it in just one go. How do you do that? We will take the car underscore data frame that we had created, the subset of variables which are numerical variables from car's data set and then we'll use the core um, method which is uh, going to compute the correlation uh, for us and the variable with which we'll compute the correlation is mileage okay let's assume for a moment this is our target variable and we want to know um, the correlation of the other um, variables with this target variable we expect them to be very high in order for these variables to be useful if the correlation is very less then probably the, the variables are not going to be useful right so that's uh, basically is what we want to see we will run this code and then we will see the correlation and here we have the correlation we have strong correlation for most of the cases as expected the correlation between mileage with mileage is one right correlation with the same variable is always one uh, correlation also gives an indication about uh, the direction in which uh, the relationship are although it is not quite correct and uh, to conclude but it gives some um, you know preliminary indication that uh, there is uh, either either there is a negative relationship or there is positive relationship and wherever you have negative sign you have negative relationship that means one increases the other one uh, will decrease and when we have positive sign I mean both increase simultaneously well we can also uh, see the correlation uh, in visual forms we can plot the correlations and we'll use the pair plot uh, from uh, the <coughs> Seaborn package that we had imported initially we'll use uh, pair plot from there and we will um, you know plot the correlation for all of uh, these numerical variables with respect to mileage because that's the variable of interest or the target variable okay we'll write a loop okay and the loop ranges from you know zero to the uh, you know number of uh, uh, number of columns in the uh, new data frame that we have created cars underscore num which only has um, the numerical uh, variables from our cards data set and then we plot it right so for cars underscore name this is x so each of these variables will be in the x and we also define what is going to be y which is a fixed right mileage uh, okay sorry so this is the data set sorry this is the data frame we are uh, providing and here we have the, uh, the index x y and x index x like what we want to keep in x and what we want to keep in y and obviously x will iterate through this loop well it is going to change and y is constant because we want to see it for uh, with respect to mileage for each one of these other variables so we have run it and here are the uh, correlation plots uh, as you can see most of them have negative relationship that's exactly what we had uh, seen in the previous uh, run see there is a negative relationship and here also we see negative relationship. If it is a downward sloping, then negative relationship. If it is upward sloping, there is positive relationship. Uh, you know, plot between mileage with itself is is something you know we should not even interpret because that makes no sense. It's just have a uh, one on one relationship. So you know we won't interpret this one. But the other ones are very useful. And you see uh, whether there is a strong relationship, there is a weak relationship. Like a mileage with length has got slightly weak relationship or weaker relationship uh, because you know the variance is higher here but uh, if you see here like weight uh, it seems to be a much stronger although you know we cannot conclude like that but at least it gives us somewhat uh, an indication 
um, yeah and also uh, these plots are useful to locate um, extreme values as you can see some of the values are extremes and uh, we also had seen these extreme values uh, in other analysis and then this simply uh, confirms our uh, observations from other analysis so that we can remove uh, maybe 1% of the extreme values uh, or 1% of the observations which can be considered as extreme values from the data before doing uh, any uh, statistical modeling. Yeah. Now we have, for instance, let's say uh, we have too many independent or too many features. Now plotting them is a bit time consuming and also a bit difficult. So we can uh, plot um, more in, in heat map forms, like wherever we have a significant uh, correlation, it's going to appear in that heat map. Okay. So we'll use the heat map method from the, uh, the C1 package. And um, you know, there's uh, you know a few things to mention, like how it should look and how it should not. Uh, but uh, we can define the threshold. Like I'm defining the threshold, like anything greater than 0.5 is a significant correlation. Now it's not a thumb rule. Uh, sometimes uh, we can take variables till 0.6, and sometimes we remove variables which are even greater than uh, correlation greater than 0.4. So it is a bit subjective, but uh, we have used 0.5. Um, okay. Uh, now correlation with the target variable is always good. So you know the higher the correlation, the better is the variable, right? Uh, so, but that's not the case with you know with uh, the independent features, right? The correlation, high correlation is not a, a good thing there. So we can have this heat map separately for uh, you know target with other independent variables and within the uh, independent features. So that way, uh, that's the way we can uh, select and remove some of these variables as well. So it helps in terms of feature selection as well, the basic feature selection obviously. And here you have, you know, you have different colors, but um, you see, you know, uh, the colors are there only where you have correlation of greater than 0.5. Other cases, it simply comes white. Right? These cases where there is no relationship because uh, there's no coloring here because the, relation, the correlation is less than 0.5 and that's the threshold that we have set up. Uh, we have is five, six variables here, so it's not very useful, but in case we have, let's say 50 or 60 variables, this is extremely useful in this form. 